action. We are making video clips conversation. We enable gaming companies to create and sell their own merchandise products in mobile games. Through Your Laundry is a premium door-to-door -door laundry and dry cleaning delivery service that combine our superpowers and become the testing tool of the future. As founders, you all understand that life is about a lot more than just making money. But I never want us in that process of becoming big that we lose our entrepreneurial spirit. We are willing to go out and try something different and change the world. My mentor experience at Techstars has been fantastic. So this is a great opportunity to give back. Techstars has a great program and they really do a great job of recruiting and then shepherding along their startups. This is the coolest job I've ever had. My Techstars experience has been incredible. I've had such an amazing time here at Techstars. It's like a family here. A once in a lifetime opportunity. It's amazing. And incredibly memorable. Many of these mentors have also become close friends. When I think of Techstars, uh, I think of three things. Credibility, collaboration, connections. Welcome, friends and family, entrepreneurs, investors, Atlantans, and out-of-towners to Techstars Atlanta Demo Day 2017. Thank you. Thank you all for attending this afternoon. I know many of you are familiar with Techstars and really eager to see 10 great companies share their stories and pitch their businesses. But first, a little bit of background information for those who are maybe a little less familiar with Techstars. Techstars Atlanta is part of a worldwide network. Today, there are over 30 accelerator programs similar to ours here in Atlanta, all around the world, all working towards the same mission, to help entrepreneurs succeed. This is our second year running the accelerator program in Atlanta, and as I look out, there we go, as I look out, I can see so many faces here uh, that, that have given their time in pursuit of this mission. That's because Techstars is a mentor-driven accelerator program. And ladies and gentlemen, our mentors are magic. Click. Backstage, click. There we go. Our mentors are magic. They are amazing individuals with deep investment, industry, and entrepreneurship experience. They work with our startups pro bono without expectation of reward or expectation. They share their knowledge, they offer their guidance, and they freely open their networks when it's appropriate. Mentors are what make Techstars unique, and the mentors in this city are what make Techstars Atlanta unique. Every Wednesday evening before our companies present their weekly KPIs, each company begins by sharing feelings of gratitude. I thought it was appropriate to kick off Demo Day this year the same way that we kick off every Wednesday evening. And so, I'd like to invite anyone who participated in our mentor program this year to please stand up. Please don't be shy, come on, stand up, and let's hold the applause for just one moment. I'd also like to invite all of our mentors from last year's program, as well as anybody that held office hours, or shared a founder story, or came in and gave a talk, please stand as well. Look at that group. On behalf of Tyler, Rachel, and myself, thank you for trusting in us to select great founders worthy of your time. On behalf of the founders, thank you so much for giving your time and opening your networks. Your impact will be evident on the stage in just a few minutes and in the years to come. And on behalf of Techstars and Cox Enterprises, 
Thank you for contributing to and expanding this worldwide network. You are the reason this program has been a success. Thank you. And so you know mentors have helped a great deal to get the companies ready for today. But before we begin, we want to share with you how the companies got here in the first place. And for that, I'd like to introduce my friend and my business partner, Tyler Scriven, to the stage. Man, tough to follow that, huh? That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Uh, it is great to be back on this stage again uh, for another year. Uh, this year with many more exciting adventures to share with you guys. Uh, first, I want to quickly um, echo some of Michael's comments and thank everyone at Techstars and Cox that made this event possible. And most importantly, all of our awesome uh, mentors. You guys are great. Thank you so much, truly. Um, identifying and, and, and building relationships with, with founders is probably the hardest thing that we do at Techstars. Uh, thankfully, it's also one of the most enjoyable. And this year was no exception. So we got started right away. In fact, we had our first meeting with Landing Lion, which is one of our companies this year, just two weeks after last year's demo day. And you'll see them on stage later today. Um, we traveled further this year than we had ever traveled before. And we dove deeper into some familiar markets than ever before. Um, we started by visiting uh, several hubs here in the Southeast, including Nashville, Chattanooga, Miami, Jacksonville, Birmingham, and the list goes on. And I'm proud to say that we also, this year, uh, found four of our companies right here in Atlanta. Um, excuse me, sorry. But we didn't stop there. We also visited Cincinnati, Salt Lake City, and we nearly made it to Toronto were it not for a nasty snowstorm that got in our way. Uh, maybe, maybe next year. Uh, but even that wasn't enough. We also visited Cincinnati. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm stuttering myself here, I apologize. Uh, so we, uh, in, the, in the true spirit of tech stars, we also decided to travel globally. So Michael and Rachel spent an incredible week in Israel, and I spent one of the most exciting uh, and insightful weeks of my life in, in Nigeria, uh, which of course is where I met Onyeka and his company, Farm Prouty. I have the pleasure of introducing Onyeka in just a few moments, but before I do, I'd like to give you some context for where we met, this amazing country called Nigeria. Nigeria is changing, and it's changing quite rapidly. With a population of 180 million people, it is now the lar seventh largest country in the world and also the largest economy in Africa. Uh, and as for, been, as for as long as I can remember, Nigeria has also been, always been an incredibly entrepreneurial and globally minded place. The country's rapid growth and connectivity and expansion of infrastructure over the past decade have opened, uh, excuse me, have opened the doors to an entirely new set of opportunities for the talented generation of young entrepreneurs that call it home. And so it should come as no surprise, uh, and it should come as no surprise, excuse me, that their tool of choice is technology. We went to Nigeria looking for the very best of these entrepreneurs, those who are committed to solving the country's most challenging, uh, the, the, most, the, the most difficult challenges the country faces. Uh, things like developing technical and physical infrastructure, bringing new energy sources to market, ending poverty, and of course, expanding the country's agricultural footprint. And so you can imagine just how thrilled I was to meet Onyeka, one of the most ambitious and inspiring entrepreneurs I've ever met. Onyeka has, ded has dedicated his entire existence to building Farm Crowdy, and in doing so, solving one of the most endemic challenges faced across the continent of Africa, an insufficient production of food. He and his team are truly dedicated, are truly on a mission, not only to, to, to generate great returns for their investors, but also to make a lasting impact on the lives of millions of small-scale farmers in Africa and abroad. And the good news is, it's working. As you'll hear from Onyeka in just a moment, Farm Crowdy is truly on a rocket ship. It is my pleasure to welcome to the stage Onyeka Akuma, founder and CEO of Farm Crowdy. Thank you. Good evening. I think all of us will agree that finding secure and reliable investments that provide a decent return, it's not always that easy. What if I told you about a retail investment opportunity that we've proven to return an average of 15 to 30%, and the best part changes the lives of small-scale farmers in Africa? My name is Onyeka Akuma, 
and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Farm Crowdy, a digital agricultural platform that's changing the way you and I can now invest in a farm and grow food for millions of people around the world while earning 15% in return. Let me show you how we do this. You can sign up as a farm follower or farm sponsor on Farm Crowdy by selecting from five different farms, including rice, maize, cassava, soybeans, and chicken. I was interested in chicken farming, so I had to first sign up using my Facebook profile. Then I clicked on the farm shop to select a chicken farm. Sponsoring a chicken farm would give you 40 chickens in one unit, but you can select as many units as you want. There's also a profit simulator that tells you what to expect at harvest. As soon as you sponsor a farm, a customer representative notifies the farmer about the new farm sponsor. Then, Farm Crowdy's technical field specialist uses the sponsorship to purchase the farm inputs to supply the farmer with what they need for the entire farming cycle. While the farmer is working, I get to receive pictures and videos on my dashboard, and additionally, I get the opportunity of visiting the farmer while they work. Once the farming is complete, the chickens are harvested and sold to prearranged wholesale buyers. And finally, I get my initial sponsorship back and a percentage of the profit like I was promised. Thank you so much, Farm Crowdy, for the opportunity of doing social good while making money. Just like in the US, many countries in Africa produce approximately three quarters of the food they eat thanks to small-scale farmers. However, despite being essential food producers, these farmers are constantly relegated to subsistence living because of three big problems. First, they are mostly unbankable and don't have the capital to expand their farms. Second, they don't know smart farming techniques and cannot take advantage of the extra land that they possess. And third, even when they solve the first two problems, at harvest, most farmers don't know the best market to sell their farm produce in order to earn a good margin. So we created Farm Crowdy to solve these problems by effectively utilizing the sponsorship we generate from farm sponsors to provide our farmers with first quality seeds, fertilizer, and labor for our farmers to cultivate and harvest more food. Second, the necessary mentoring and smart farming techniques. Third, market access for our farmers to sell their farm produce and earn an actual living from farming as a business. Our solution functions on a business model where we split profit between the farmer, the farm sponsor, and farm crowdy. It works by paying our farmers 40% of the profit from the farm, then paying our farm sponsors 40% of the profit from the harvest, plus their initial capital invested, and the farm crowd keeps the remaining 20%. This is a win, win, win scenario for everyone. Think of it as an impact plus return model, which is any farm crowd a gross profit of approximately 5 to 7% of the total sponsorship generated on each farm. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to tell you that our model is working. Since launching 12 months ago in Nigeria, we have worked with more than 2,000 small-scale farmers and grown their income by an average of 80% annually. This is made possible because we have generated close to 2 million US dollars in farm sponsorships in Nigeria alone. Thank you. With a combined 4,000 acres of farmland across eight states in Nigeria, we're growing crops from corn to cassava, rice, soya beans, and over 150,000 organic chickens. And frankly, we can't produce farm sponsorships fast enough to meet up with the demand. Our farm sponsors line up on the waiting list, so we usually sell out our farm units in just a few hours. That's it. With over 180 million people in Nigeria, the agricultural sector currently generates over $100 billion annually. This represents an opportunity for Farm Crowdy to target 38 million small-scale farmers while carefully assessing its growth plans to replicate this community model in other African countries like Ghana, Kenya, Rwanda. Basically, 
any country where the proper structure to support small-scale farming is lacking, this becomes an opportunity for farm crowding, and the addressable market is literally huge. Today, we have proven our model. Farmers welcome our help. Farm sponsors snap up farm units quickly, and now we just need your help to help us expand and keep up with the demand. But you may be wondering, who is building farm crowding? We're a team of 20 with ample experience in technology, financial management, and importantly, agricultural operations. With over 70% of our workforce dedicated to agricultural operations and technology, together we have a common goal of empowering small-scale farming across Africa. So I want to welcome you today to join us as we continue to grow our impact across the developing world. Please sign up today as a farm follower and join this new group of farmers without a farm who are using technology to positively change the way small-scale farming is done. I'm available to answer questions, so please come and talk to us to see how you too can invest in our work and change the world doing so. Please follow a farm today. Thank you. It's a very interesting, what I'd call hybrid technology of both new additive 3D printing technology and traditional injection molding, which we've never really seen before, but could be a very interesting approach that's going to lead to a lot of new innovative solutions for on-demand manufacturing in the future. So I think just their creative approach to uh, how this is going to fit, not just for consumers, where there's been a lot of talk about 3D printing, but now going into the industrial side, I think is going to be very interesting. Everything that we do is an opportunity for us to learn more. So when I meet innovative startups, I'm learning a lot about new technologies, new business models, and also I'm feeding off of the energy that startups give. So, you know, any advice and help that I can provide comes first, but there, there is a return that comes from that also. It's my great pleasure to introduce the CEO of Collider Technologies, Graham Bredemeyer. Customized goods are going mainstream. Customization in footwear alone, for example, is a $2 billion market. But there are virtually no tools for making custom shoes today, or any physical product for that matter. Even the development of non-custom products is incredibly expensive and time consuming. And we all know that getting to market faster matters. For example, a mold for this seemingly simple midsole costs $10,000 and takes four weeks to make during late stage product development. This nearly identical midsole made with Collider's technology costs 30 bucks and takes less than a work day to make. I'm Graham Bredemeyer founder of Collider, creators of a machine that makes rubber, plastic, and metal parts up to 10 times faster and 50 times cheaper than other manufacturing processes, like the one I outlined before. 3D printing is an amazing technology, but be very clear, 3D printing is not intended for late stage product development or mass customization. While some 3D printed parts might look okay, the parts are built layer by layer, resulting in weak points, and made with materials that are not production friendly. At Collider, we built a machine that works with any material, including the massive list of materials the world of manufacturing knows, trusts, and has relied on for decades. Materials that products on shelves are actually made of today. Let me show you how this works and compare it to what is currently being done. Once a user has a part designed, their next step is typically designing a mold. This process can take days or even weeks and is usually very expensive. With Collider's technology, a user simply uploads a part design and in minutes, our software designs a mold for the user. Typically, this is the phase where you wait four plus weeks for your mold to get made. With Collider's technology, our machine carries out and uh, makes a mold on demand in just hours. A business using the traditional process now has a mold that they can inject to make parts with. But the setup time can take hours of skilled labor. Our machine carries out an injection process automatically, 
no additional setup required. Four weeks and tens of thousands of dollars later, the traditional process finally produces a production quality part, a part that can be evaluated and go through the same lengthy process when the results inevitably aren't perfect the first time. With Collider's technology, that mold dissolves in water, and those changes were just one workday away, and our production grade. Production runs can be smaller, more frequent, and allow for more testing. Collider's patent pending process is a complete paradigm shift in, in the world of manufacturing, enabling literally thousands of manufacturers to design and test at a fraction of the cost at previously unheard of speeds. 3D printing is a $5 billion industry today, estimated to hit 20 billion by the year 2020. And it's full of companies differentiating by making custom materials for their machine. Collider is the only company with a machine that can work with almost any manufacturing material available today. Our business model consists of two major opportunities. First, we're going to market with an on-demand managed service where dedicated machines are run by our team and materials used to make parts are sold based on usage. It's like Amazon Web Services for manufacturing. This is a high margin business intended to service both low and high volume customers who prefer an outsourced solution. In addition, this will allow us to continue developing our technology while offering an important service to paying customers. Once our standalone machines are ready, we plan to sell them directly to manufacturers who will use them at their facility. We'll do this while continuing to operate our on-demand service. Collider's technology is in its late development stages, about to launch our beta. To date, we've shipped over 80 parts to 12 companies across several verticals. We've begun to develop deeper relationships with a handful of these companies with applications ranging from prototyping to mass customization. Moving forward, we're working to secure contracts with each of these companies, with a goal of launching our beta program at the end of the year with a group of five companies. We'll be working with these companies to improve the speed and cost of their late stage product development, mass customization, and just-in-time inventory efforts. Together, these applications represent a $100 billion market size today. My background is in industrial 3D printing. I've worked for the largest 3D printing on demand service in the US, and I've helped bring multiple 3D printing technologies to life. Working with me to bring Collider's technology to life is an outstanding team of both veteran and fresh driven engineers. At Collider, we're enabling a world where products can be made up to 10 times faster and 50 times cheaper than they are today. Manufacturing will never be the same. Thank you. That's it. That's all you need. Secret weapon. Hi, I'm Amanda Haig. I'm the digital marketing specialist for Yancey Brothers. If you want to be successful in the digital space, you have to build landing pages. Landing Lion makes it so easy for me to create landing pages. And I have to create so many. And I can create page after page after page in a day. And it's easy and it's fun. And it's helping us succeed in what we need to do. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Alan Pledger, the CEO and co-founder of Landing Lion. So that was Amanda. And her job is to sell construction equipment and services online. But the problem is, is that it takes her $3,000 in two weeks her page that she wants to create. And that can add up really fast. But what that doesn't even consider is the number of missed opportunities because she's constantly blocked from pursuing her ideas. And that problem isn't unique to Amanda. This is a problem that business owners and marketers face every single day. Every single business wrestles with the exact same questions. How do we get to market faster? How can people find us and engage with our brand? And how can we track what's working? Well, these are the problems that Landing Line is solving, but instead of trying to describe it to you guys, I'd rather just show you. So behind me, 
our creative director, Andrew, is gonna build a page right here in front of you live. And while he's doing this, I'm gonna point out a few things that you'll notice that are unique to landing line and landing line alone. The first thing that you'll notice is how visual this is. Every single first generation content management system separates content from the template. Well, this is wrong because content, layout, and design work together to tell a story. So that's why in our editor, you manage content in line with the layout designer. The next thing you'll notice is how fast and easy this is. We focused on creating a user experience that allows pixel perfect designers like Andrew here full control over every detail while remaining simple enough for a beginner to easily edit, duplicate, or sort content. But there's also a lot that you guys don't see. What you don't see is how we've automatically optimized this page for mobile, search rank, and quality score. And what you also don't see is how the touch of a button, you can instantly launch a production-ready page. Hey, Andrew, can we show them what that means? Can you deploy that page, install an SSL certificate, conversion tracking, visitor tracking, an A-B testing framework, and update the sitemap? And just like that, this page is now live. Without any additional steps, you can begin to measure and test the results of your content. Our pages are automatically fully configured with our proprietary tracking analytics that allow you to literally follow people around and watch their journey. So for the first time ever, your web content is no longer this black box. We combine user analytics and content creation so that anyone on your team can quickly and easily understand how your content is performing. And that's why our customers are able to get to market faster and smarter than their competition. And guys, I just really want to, I want to pause for a second and say that was an actual live demo, not something recorded. Can we give Andrew some love? But there's so much more that we wish we had time to show you. The important thing to remember is that we're a product team. We've built this foundation from scratch and we've built it to scale. With this solid foundation, we've been testing numerous sales and marketing strategies. We've validated channels that range from personal projects to businesses to agencies. Since launching in March, our user base has been growing organically, and we currently have hundreds of active users. In fact, word has already traveled overseas, and over 20% of those active users are international, making pages in other languages. We've also grown our revenue by over 400% since joining Techstars, and we expect that to double again by the end of the year. And this is because landing line is incredibly sticky. To date, we've maintained a 98% retention rate. Learning from this traction, we've decided to focus our initial go-to-market efforts on small marketing teams that either sit internally or externally. We'll reach these markets using two main approaches. The first is through account-based marketing to specific verticals with high contract values, like Amanda from Yancey. The second is through traditional inbound marketing. We're building valuable quality content using our own product and then systematically promoting it through paid and organic channels. Right now, this inbound system is producing a community of evangelists through our freemium self-service model. Our goal is widespread SMB and enterprise adoption, but starting with the individual user and then growing within the organization from the bottom up. You see, we've removed the barrier to adoption by creating a two-axis pricing model as simple as our product. It's based off of features and page views, and here's how it works. When someone signs up, they'll first pick a plan based off the features they need. Our base package allows for 1,000 page views per month for free, but as they build more pages and reach more people, the monthly price will scale, along with their total monthly page views and more advanced feature packages. This allows our customers to grow with us, so that way landing line can be effective for personal projects and small businesses, but it also means we're not leaving revenue on the table from the large ones. And where do we see this going? Well, there are about two million growth-oriented companies located here in the US with less than 500 million in revenue. Most of these are in non-tech sectors and are just now discovering the ROI in digital marketing. And to replicate what Landing Line does, these companies would have to spend at least $5,000 a year in MarTech SaaS subscriptions alone. This means there's easily a $10 billion market, not including the consumer or global market, which we've also validated. The same way companies like MailChimp capture the attention of individual users, consumers, and businesses alike, we plan to make our friendly, user-focused product 
the new standard for web publishing. But before we close, I need to tell you guys about the amazing people that brought this idea to life. My co-founders, Craig Hunter and I, <clears throat> met at Georgia Tech, and we've been building products together for over five years. <clears throat> Using nothing but our network and raw passion, we've been able to recruit a talented team of 10 individuals. Now that we have the people of product and traction, we're putting, together, we're putting together a seed round to continue product development and to scale sales and marketing. You see, we've already built an incredibly powerful platform, but this is just the beginning. If you want to learn more about what the future of web content will look like, go to the page that Andrew just made right here in front of you. The link is demoday.landinglion.com. My name is Alan, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Landing Line, and thank you guys for coming out. The reason that I uh, got an opportunity and got interested in Fraudmark was when I met with the team, they described to me what they did in terms of solving this fraudulent email situation. And at QA Symphony, where I work, we had experienced that same issue just a few weeks earlier, so I was excited to jump in because I knew this was a huge problem that needed attention. I've uh, enjoyed uh, really getting to interact with the team, with Keith, with Richard, and to feel their excitement, the passion that both of these folks have around solving this problem, and to see that Fraudmark can solve this complex problem in a very uh, cost-effective and actionable way very quickly was really exciting to me. I'm very pleased to introduce to you all the CEO of Fraudmark, Keith Coleman. Don't screw it up, Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Coleman, CEO of Fraudmark, and we're working alongside internet giants like Microsoft and Google to secure your brand against phishing damage. I know what you're thinking. Why are they working with a startup like us? Well, 97% of the Fortune 500, with their huge teams of IT experts, struggle and fail to master the crazy complicated policies necessary to secure their brands. David Cohen, a venture fund manager at Techstars, sends out dozens of emails to LPs containing wire information. But how can you really be sure this email is from David? Other than calling him, the truth is, you don't know. This is a phishing attempt, and it uses David's exact email address. And this, if successful, could cost a lot of money and erode Techstars' reputation. But Techstars is not unique. We scanned 61 of your companies, and all but one of you are vulnerable. Now, for over a decade, complex policies have existed to block these spoofed emails. First, there's SPF, a whitelist of every server authorized to send email from your company domain. Next is DKIM. It allows companies to cryptographically authenticate every legitimate message. There's also DMARC, for this code, P equals reject, would protect Techstars' brand and their LP's money. Have I lost you yet? Well, you're not alone. 485 of the Fortune 500 are also baffled. So phishing happens, again and again. In fact, the FBI determined that hackers stole $5.3 billion using phishing attacks last year. But what about the brand damage associated with this? It's unquantifiable. Most companies that have been responsible enough to attempt these internet policies blow their entire budget on phase one, buying costly DMARC reports. Now, thanks to support we've received from Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Techstars, I'm thrilled to announce Fraudmark's gift to the internet. Any company, any size, sending any volume of email will receive DMARC reports for free. It's time we all move forward together. Instead of having to decipher DMARC data on your own, write code and configure policies, Fraudmark manages it all for you at the click of a button. One slip up when you try and run these policies yourself can send all of your legitimate mail to spam. Instead, Rest easy, as Fraudmark continuously monitors and updates everything for you. Let me show you how Fraudmark starts protecting your brand. From our homepage, 
enter your domain <laughs> and scan your security. Not so hot. But if you purchase your domain name through one of our integrated registrars, you'll soon see the following flow. That one click is all it takes to install FraudMark. Now, suppose your marketing team wants to use a sweet new email marketing service. Instead of having to configure lots of delicate policies where one slip up blocks all of your legitimate mail, FraudMark provides one click authorization. We provide self-service directly to companies via our website. We deliver managed services to guide enterprises in securing their brand. And we have a channel strategy to secure millions of companies via integrations with email service providers and domain registrars. There, we're targeting prices from $10 per customer per month down to $1 at higher volumes. During Techstars, we integrated with GoDaddy, the largest domain registrar. We're also adding support for one-in-one -one and united domains. We have live pilots with Cox Enterprises and the Weather Channel. So there's a big opportunity for us to secure Fortune 500 companies, but we believe the much bigger opportunity is still on the horizon. By simplifying and streamlining implementation, we will make email authentication as ubiquitous as the website security lock that you see every day. Seriously, watch your inboxes and you will see this very soon if you haven't already. We're not the only ones pushing for this either. In 2015, Google, Microsoft, and other big internet providers announced their desire to mandate these protections for every business that sends email. A lot of businesses will need FraudMark. We've been working alongside these giants to protect brands and their customers. My co-founder, Richard, has a PhD and spent the last 14 years simplifying huge data sets at Emory University. I've been managing high volume web infrastructure and configuring policies exactly like this for the last 15 years. Now, companies of all sizes spend a lot of money protecting their inbox, but not enough to protect their outbox. GoDaddy and others are integrating FraudMark because they realize that these kind of protections are essential to improve internet safety. Phishing is a real threat, and most of your companies are completely vulnerable. So visit fraudmark.com right now for a free instant security checkup. Thank you. So for the Atlanta market, there really is no other player, at least not that I'm aware of, and I'm pretty plugged into what's going on in the city. So when I heard the two laundry was launching in Atlanta, as a busy full-time working mom that hates laundry, I'm just, I'm over the moon. I'm so excited. My favorite part about working with Alex, Dan, and the entire Two Laundry team is the innovation that they're bringing to something that people have been doing for ages, right? The fact that I can now outsource a much-hated chore and overnight my clothes are returned to me clean, sorted, color-coordinated, like, hello, love it, it's great, it's awesome. I am so stoked to introduce Alex of To You Laundry to you right now. Hi, I'm Alex Merznak, the co-founder and CEO of To You Laundry. At To You Laundry, we are proud to have created over one million hours of free time for our customers to enjoy with their friends and family. Now with just a simple text, you can have your dirty clothes picked up from right outside your front door, clean to your exact preferences, and return the very next day, perfectly cleaned and folded. I'm 25 years old and have been in the laundry business since my freshman year of college at Wake Forest University. I actually worked for another laundry startup called Wake Wash as a bag runner. I picked up clothes from right outside students' doors, brought them off campus to laundromats and dry cleaners to be cleaned, and loved it. I actually believed in the business model so much that I cleared my savings account, took out a loan, and purchased that business my sophomore year. Two years later, we sold that business for a 10x return. Even, the, <laughs> yeah. 
even though I graduated col college with an exit, learned a lot along the way, and had fun while doing it, I wasn't satisfied. I didn't want to hit 30 years old and regret not going after the $35 billion industry with everything that I've got. My co-founder, Dan DeQuisto, has been my best friend since sixth grade. He has a background in sales and marketing that complements me very well and has led our demand generation efforts to date. When I told him about the opportunity, he immediately quit his job, packed his car, broke the lease on his house, and drove 20 hours straight from Minneapolis to Charlotte to get started. We haven't slept since. We were first doing the laundry at, our, at my apartment in Charlotte and delivering the clothes back to our customers in my 2007 Jeep Liberty. As we scaled, we realized just how much of a technical component there is to our business. So we brought on serial entrepreneur Caleb Lamb. Caleb Lamb has decades of experience scaling businesses and in fact grew the second largest e-commerce site in Mexico. Since January of 2016, we have grown our business to over $100,000 in monthly revenue in the Charlotte market alone. Year over year, we are on pace to triple that revenue by the end of this year. Right now, we are acquiring 10 new customers a day, every single day. And with our expansion plans, we will double that by the end of this year and look to triple that number again by the end of 2018. Over the next 18 months, we are launching three additional markets across the South, which will allow us to hit a six and a half million dollar run rate by the end of 2018. We're not the first team to try to consolidate this space. In fact, Rinse, Washio, and Cleanly have all raised venture capital to go after the laundry and dry cleaning industry with the wrong models. We knew there was a better way. Instead of trying to be the Uber for laundry, we're the UPS of laundry, and we operate on static scheduled routes. Instead of outsourcing and jeopardizing quality, the core competency of our business, we've discovered a way to create our own supply chain with no CapEx. And finally, instead of targeting vertically dense cities like New York, San Francisco, and Chicago, we're targeting the fastest growing cities in the country. Cities like Charlotte, Raleigh, and right here in Atlanta. We generate revenue through two distinct products, laundry and dry cleaning. For laundry, we charge a flat price per bag instead of per pound, which champions the consumer. All you need to do is stuff the bag as full as you would like and don't have to hop on a scale or do calculus to understand what a pound of laundry looks like. For dry cleaning, we offer market competitive pricing, only we pick up and deliver the very next day. Our obsession and constant iteration on both price and logistics has allowed us to produce industry-leading unit economics and a gross margin of 30% on every single order. Our customers appreciate our quality service as well. This is evident by the 98% of our customers that have in-home washers and dryers but still use our service on a weekly basis. We've identified three core customer segments your business professional that uses us predominantly for dry cleaning and laundry here and there when they're having a busy week at work, dual income households with kids where the last thing you want to do as parents when you get home from work is more work or hours of laundry, and finally multifamily apartments and businesses that want to offer our value added of service as an amenity to their residents and employees. Our customers use Uber to hail rides, Instacart to shop for groceries, and now they use 2U Laundry. So show of hands real quick. Who in the room is looking forward to going home and doing laundry tonight? Right, nobody is. And this is exactly why it was voted the most hated household chore in the country by the Wall Street Journal. Most people don't realize the average family of four is spending over 36 hours a month sorting, washing, drying and folding clothes. That's almost an entire work week spent on this mundane recurring activity. That same family of four spends between 80 and $90 a month on detergent, softener, wear and tear on their equipment, and utilities. And then there's dry cleaning. We've all been there. It's one of those errands that requires us to make a return trip only to find out that our favorite shirt had been lost or ruined. 
this is why we launched Two Laundry, and I would love to show you how it works. Just like breaking any bad habit, the first step is admitting that you have a problem. In this case, a laundry problem. Next, you immediately go to 2ulaundry.com and create your custom cleaning profile. This takes less than three minutes and allows you to dictate specific detergents, softener, starch level for dry cleaning, water uh, and dryer temperatures. The laundry list goes on. Once you've created this account one time, a 2U valet will hand deliver separate garment bags for dry cleaning, wash and fold, and hang dry. From this point on, you'll be reminded every step of the way via text message, starting with a reminder text the night before your first pickup. On your scheduled day, your bags will be picked up from right outside your front door, cleaned to your exact preferences, and returned the very next day perfectly cleaned and folded. At this point, I'm sure you're thinking this is just simply too good to be true. <laughs> and so on behalf of our team, I am incredibly excited to announce that we will be launching the ATL next. We are already live in 21 zip codes and have over 1,000 individuals on our wait list. I'd love for you all to join that group. So during the break, actually, you know what? Right now, I want all of you to pull out your phones. Come on, pull out your phones. Go to atl.2ulaundry.com. Get 50% off your first order with promo code LAUNCHATL, and then never do laundry again. Thank you, and stay clean. Techstars is a global ecosystem that empowers entrepreneurs to bring new technologies to market wherever they choose to build their business. Our ecosystem includes founders, alumni, mentors, investors, community leaders, sponsors, and many more. That's all of you here in this room. We run accelerator programs in cities all across the globe and with corporate partners in different vertical markets. We are the only accelerator that has literally tied the United States together and now the globe. We also run startup programs like Startup Weekend, Startup Week, and Startup Digest. Grassroots programs mostly organized by volunteers that power the early steps of the entrepreneurial journey. And there's Techstars Ventures with hundreds of millions of dollars under management. We co-invest in companies that are part of the Techstars ecosystem. Together, we help entrepreneurs from inspiration to IPO. Techstars is for life. We couldn't be more excited to welcome these founders to the family. At Techstars, we believe that entrepreneurs can solve real problems, and we're here to help you grow and scale and to provide resources and connections throughout your entrepreneurial journey. It's the beginning of the rest of the lives for all of the companies that go through our program. Today is demo day. These companies present themselves to the world. Thank you to all of you and everyone in the Techstars ecosystem who has made it all possible. Everybody's doing what they're doing because they love it and they're trying to do something really powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Brad Feld. Howdy, Atlanta. That's some good energy. That was a pretty awesome uh, first half. Uh, I've been uh, seeing demo days now for uh, 11 years, uh, and it never, uh, it never gets old. It's always fun. Um, when we started Techstars, uh, one of the things that we were really focused on was this notion of creating uh, a global startup community. And when I heard about uh, the initial ideas for Techstars Atlanta with Cox and Cox's view on what they wanted to do in Atlanta with Techstars. Um, there's something that's subtle, but was very, very powerful for me when I was reflecting on it as I was, again, hearing about it coming together, which was that Cox was really viewing it as an investment in Atlanta and the Atlanta startup community. And it would have been very easy to name this program the Cox Accelerator or something like that. 
But the idea that it's Techstars Atlanta in conjunction with Cox reminds us how powerful it is for companies that are established companies to be able to invest in and build the infrastructure for the cities that they're part of. So I just want to give a thank you to the folks at Cox that are here uh, for their support of this program and for their forward-looking way of approaching it. Uh, Eleven years ago, uh, David Brown, David Cohen, uh, Jared Polis, and I uh, started the very first Techstars Accelerator in Boulder. And in 2006, uh, the, the idea that there would be a vibrant startup community in Boulder, Colorado was not a given. Uh, there was startup activity and there was entrepreneurship and I moved to Boulder in the mid-90s and there was stuff going on, but the idea that uh, Boulder would be nationally recognized as uh, a startup hub was not something that anybody thought of. And in fact, kind of the comment that we got from a lot of people is, why would you do that in Boulder? And our view was not just why not Boulder, but we had a belief that you could do this and what was happening in Boulder anywhere in the world. And more importantly, that it was critically important for the health of every city uh, that wanted to have longevity, to have a vibrant startup community. And that in fact, if you looked at entrepreneurship, the notion of entrepreneurship and company creation would become broadly distributed around the world. And the idea that there'd be a few places where startups would get created, and if you wanted to create a startup, you had to go to those few places was nonsensical. If you wind forward to 2017 and you start thinking about internationally recognized startup communities, um, I think Atlanta's on that list. And I think it's very powerful to think about what's been created here um, over the last 10, 15 years around entrepreneurial activity. Um, somebody asked me earlier tonight, you know, did I know anything about Atlanta? And I remember Atlanta in the late 90s, companies that some people here might remember like IXL, um, that sort of came out of nowhere and all of a sudden were, you know, significant companies and then internet bubble collapsed and uh, life went back to something else. Um, but that notion, the sort of energy around entrepreneurship and company creation um, that is part of uh, the essence of any great city is something that today in Atlanta is very clear. And it's exciting to be able to be part of it uh, through Techstars and participate through Techstars and what y'all are creating here in Atlanta. And I think Michael said at the beginning, it couldn't be done without the engagement from all the people in this room. What we try to do at Techstars is driven not just by the founders, but driven by the mentors, by driven by the whole startup community. So I want y'all to give yourself a hand for your engagement in this, so thank you. It's always fun to give yourself a hand, right? I mean, it's kind of like, it's cool. Um, in the context of this is the phrase that you'll hear a lot around tech stars, which is a phrase, give first. And the idea of give first is linked directly to this, right? And you say it's sort of cute to applaud for yourself and to, you know, give yourself credit for what you've been doing. But it's an important acknowledgement for this notion of the power of Give First, which is this idea of putting energy into the startup community without necessarily knowing what you're gonna get back. You expect to get something back, it's not philanthropy, but you don't know from whom, over what time period, in what consideration, in what magnitude it's gonna come. And what we've learned at Techstars over the last 11 years is in each of the communities that we're involved in, if everybody in the community that's involved in startups can put energy into the system, can give first, magical things start coming out at an ever-increasing rate. And from where I sit today, looking at these companies and thinking about the dynamics of uh, what has gone on to get them to this point, and knowing that this point is just a starting point for the next phase, I have to say thank you to everybody in this room for giving first. So thank you. That was amazing. If you enjoyed the first half, you're going to love the second half. But before we continue, a few more thanks. Being part of a worldwide network begins right here at home. And since we launched this program two years ago, we've enjoyed the support of a handful of groups around town 
that I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge this evening, starting with Venture Atlanta. Allison, Philip, and the board at VA, we are so grateful for our partnership and for being able to once again align our events to maximize the opportunity for our startups and for investors. We're all looking forward to an incredible 10th year anniversary event over the next two days. Thank you so much for your partnership. <laughs> to the Metro Atlanta Chamber, where are you? Thank you to Hala, David, Jennifer, and all the wonderful people at Mac that have been so gracious in helping our startups connect with the large corporations around town. This startup corporation connection is critical in fostering our ecosystem. And we're really excited for the first Corporate Innovation Summit and BizDev Day this Friday. Thank you. And next, Switchyards. Mike and Dave approached me. Mike and Dave approached me after last year and asked how they could get more involved with our B2C startups that come through the program. And this year, they mentored all of our B2Cs as a duo, and leading a great talk on brand and hosting several office hours. Thanks for the support, guys, and we look forward to Thursday night's Techstars edition of The Consumer Show. And in just a few minutes, you're going to hear an update from one of last year's Techstars alum, Pat Poundpunkel. Pat Poundpunkel. Pat was on this stage last year pitching real meal delivery. And after having worked with Mike and Dave on a business model and brand pivot, he's back tonight to give us an update. But first, I've talked about community and partners, but our biggest partner of all, of course, is Cox Enterprises. They believe in a greater Atlanta, one that is known as a home for entrepreneurs and for startups. And so thank you to Duncan, Tim, Ariel, Elizabeth, Susan, Vic, John, and all the teams at Cox that support our program. And of course, a huge thank you to Alex Taylor, Cox's COO. It was Alex's vision that brought Techstars to Atlanta. Please join me in welcoming him to the stage. And a little bit of chicken fry. Go beer on a Friday night. A pair of jeans to fit. What if I were to tell you that a long, long time ago in a land far, far away, a young man was born on a farm and grew up with a vision of a better world. And he grew up and he created a company that turned into a great success in his lifetime. And around the time that he was in his 70s or 80s, he passed the baton of that company on to his child who tripled the size of that company. And that, that young man passed the baton on to his nephew who over the course of the next 20 years quadrupled the size of that company. And then one day, another young man who wasn't born so far away was handed the baton and somebody said to him, it is your job to make sure that the best days of this enterprise still lie ahead. I'm Alex Taylor, and I decided like 30 seconds ago to try to do a Techstar style introduction. So I hope it went, I hope it went well. <laughs> a little bit awkward, but, uh, but I did want to take a second to thank you all for, for coming here. And uh, that actually is, a, is basically a true story. There's a whole lot of detail um, in there. This, this company that we have called Cox Enterprises was uh, founded in 1898 in uh, Dayton, Ohio. It was a newspaper. And, um, you know, back then, if you owned a small town newspaper, you were like one of the most important people in town. And uh, that newspaper is still uh, part of the Cox portfolio. We love it very much. Um, we, uh, over the years, grew many, many more newspapers. But the reason that we are a bigger company now than we've ever been before is because we were able to adapt. Um, Long before I was even born, uh, people that ran this company said we need to embrace new technology, uh, we need to think about new ideas, people aren't going to be reading newspapers forever as the only means of their news. And so radio came along and television came along. And then some smart people said television isn't going to be around forever as we know it. There's this new technology called cable, and uh, cable is now the largest part of our business. Um, we have an automotive business, we have a media business, but all in all, it's happened as a result of smart people surrounding themselves with other smart people and creating um, a community of uh, people that are dedicated to building a better world while doing their business. The, the thing that motivated me to work for Cox Enterprises and the thing that motivates me to be here today is that in my lifetime, I have seen that companies have a much bigger impact 
and have the potential to have a much bigger impact on the world around them than just what they do every day. If a company's only goal in life is to make money and to squeeze everybody that works for that company for every little ounce of profit that they can get out of it, I would say that that company doesn't have a bright future. Uh, the thing that makes companies great are when they realize the ripple effect they have on the world around them. And, you know, we live in a crazy world. Um, you know, things have happened this year and in the last so many years that make you realize that, you know, the world is a troubled place and companies and people have to come together and do whatever they can to make the future a bright one. And the thing that has made our company at every stage a brighter future, a, a brighter company in the future is the fact that smart people got smart groups of people around new ideas, around radio, around television, around automotive, around cable. And as I look forward into the future, we need to embrace new ideas. And they're coming at us and they're sprouting all over the world faster and faster uh, than ever before. And my goal is to identify those ideas and those things that we should build a community around. And something I'm very, very passionate about is Atlanta. I was born here, um, I grew up here, and, and I love Atlanta. Um, I live here with my wife, who's here today, and my kids, and I work with all of my colleagues, and our goal is to be here for many, many years and have it be a bigger and brighter place. And Atlanta will not survive if it is not good at bringing in new ideas supporting those new ideas and creating communities where new ideas are feel at home. And um, there's nothing better um, that I can say I have done today or recently than being here in this room with all of you. You are all people that are interested in new ideas. You are all people that are supportive of startups and entrepreneurs. And if we can all together stick together and create a community of people that support entrepreneurship and, uh, and a brighter future, um, then our work, our work will never be done. But you can say um, the beginning is all, all the best pieces are in place. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for supporting these entrepreneurs. I am so inspired when I sit here and I think about the stories of uh, you know, a freshman at Wake Forest taking pictures of himself with laundry bags over his shoulder, talking about laundry like it is by far the coolest thing that ever happened. Or a young man that... Uh, was born in, in Nigeria on a farm and somehow now is standing in front of a thousand people in Atlanta with an app that he's built generating revenue. All of these companies are so impressive and, um, and it means the world to them that you all are here to support them and it means the world to me um, that we're all here together creating a, a community around startups and around new ideas. So thanks for being here. Um, we have five more uh, great pitches to go so I don't know if anybody can really select a favorite but uh, I look forward to talking to you all afterwards about about your favorite, and thank you for um, thank you for everything you're doing for our young entrepreneurs. And a little bit of chicken fried, cold beer on a Friday night. How come you're always such a fussy young man? Don't want no Captain Crunch, don't want no Raisin Bran. Well, don't you? Oh, come on, come on. So, I've got a confession to make. Hi, my name is Pat, and I'm a first-time founder. And like many first-time founders, my entrepreneurial journey hasn't always been the smoothest. You see, for me, it was supposed to be easy. I graduated from Wharton, worked on Wall Street, and then joined Excel Partners, one of the world's leading venture capital firms. But shortly after launching our company, I found myself in a Kroger parking lot, begging strangers to try out our service for free. The startup path seemed brutally impossible until I met Techstars, and that's when everything changed. Hi, everyone. My name is Pat Powenfunkel, CEO and co-founder of Sage. But on this very stage a year ago, I was pitching a company to you called Real Meal Delivery. Now, the premise of Real Meal Delivery was simple. Customers came online and selected from a menu of 60 items. We cooked those selections and delivered them directly to your door. But working with tech stars and our mentors from SwitchYards, what we came to realize was that while the service was incredibly convenient, asking people to make proactive decisions week in and week out was just way too much work. In fact, people make hundreds of decisions a day, but what's for dinner shouldn't be one of them. So, 
We laid it all on the line, and we pivoted the business to Sage. Now, Sage is a modern-day personal chef. And in 2017, we don't believe a personal chef should be someone in your kitchen cooking exorbitantly expensive meals. Instead, customers come to our site and fill out a dietary profile. Food you like, food you hate, allergens, special diets. And every week, we send you an email of recommendations broken out by everyone in your family, recommendations that can be easily modified. We cook those recommendations and deliver them to your door ready to heat. Preparation takes two minutes in the microwave or 10 minutes in the oven. The net result for customers is no cooking, no decision making, and meals that are personalized for everyone in your family. Now, underpinning Sage's consumer experience is a complex business that brings together elements from companies across a variety of sectors. First, we start off with menu modularization. When customers come to our site, they tell us exactly what cuisines that they want. And we borrow from companies like Chipotle, who are experts at taking a minimum number of ingredients and stretching that to an endless number of menu permutations. But Sage does this across cuisines. An ingredient like brown rice, for example, can be used across American, Mexican, and Asian cuisines. The result is an endless amount of customer variety with highly efficient and profitable production. And we figured out a way to do this with very high quality. We've built a Netflix-like recommendation engine that takes these hundreds of thousands of menu possibilities and starts to map that to the preferences of our entire customer base. After each meal, customers give us feedback that allows us to improve your recommendations, as well as the recommendations of our entire system. At Sage, we realize that everyone eats differently and have built a platform that allows us to personalize in a very scalable way. And we're able to do this with very limited investment spend. A typical restaurant chain might have 20 high-foot traffic retail locations where rent and real estate are incredibly expensive. In the same area that they service with these 20 locations, we're able to service with a single kitchen, and we do that at 1 20th the capital investment. This is classic Amazon versus Barnes & Noble bookstores. Our delivery model is also very efficient because we make them overnight when there's no traffic. Between the hours of midnight and 6 a.m., our drivers drop off cooler bags of meals that are waiting for customers when they wake up. Think of us as your friendly neighborhood milkman, except for delicious and personalized food. So, How'd the pivot turn out? Well, in just six months since Sage's launch, we've surpassed the million dollar annual run rate revenue mark. Yeah, all right. We're growing 15% week over week, driven by 60% word of mouth acquisition. Our most recent net promoter score of 70 puts us on par with some of the best consumer brands in the world. And compared to real meal delivery, our customer retention is five times higher. We're lucky enough to be supported by some of Atlanta's best angel investors, most of whom we met through Techstars last year. So where are we headed? Well, very simply, we know it costs us $2 million to stand up a market. We're on a path where each market can drive $10 million in revenue and 25% EBITDA margin. Based on public market comps, that values each location at $20 to $50 million. And there are hundreds of markets across the United States that need a service like Sage. We've come a long way since that amazing Kroger parking lot experience in just two short years. And what I hope you take away from today is that first, startups aren't straightforward. In fact, the 10 companies presenting today move mountains in order to attain their visions. And that level of tenacity and grit cannot be understated. The second thing I hope you take away is that Techstars makes founders better. Hard stop. So I'd like to thank Techstars, Cox Enterprises, the Atlanta community for getting us to where we are today. And I've got two more asks that I'd like to make of you all. The first is that if you like our traction and believe in our investment thesis, please come and find me afterwards and let's talk about how we can partner up on our next phase of growth. And finally, make sure to come to our site and let Sage be your modern day personal chef. Thank you very much. <laughs>
and they all involve not touching the screen. So using things and places and times and people to sort of figure out how to solve these challenges with outside the box thinking. Even with a large audience, it can be really tough to balance making money and making something great as a game developer. We basically have three options, which are to charge up front, use in-app purchases, or use advertisements. That is until now, we have a great new fourth option, which is the monetizer. And it's my pleasure to introduce my new friend and co-founder of the monetizer, Martins. How many of you guys have ever played a video game on your phones? Raise your hands. We asked hundreds of gamers what annoys them the most about games. And do you know what they say? Advertising. Ads suck. But why do game developers implement ads in the first place? Well, because game developers need to make money. The easiest way to do it currently is inserting ads. However, that seriously degrades the experience of the gamers. What if I told you we can eliminate ads, grow revenue 14 times, and increase engagement? I am Martins, co-founder of The Monetizer, and we have developed an unobtrusive solution that game studios can simply plug into their games and begin selling high-quality merchandise products right inside the games. So let me show you how it works. You just heard from our customer, Ryan, the creator of an Apple Design Award-winning game called Blackbox. B Ryan decided to use the monetizer to increase user engagement and offer unique products that fit with their carefully crafted game design aesthetic. We worked with Ryan to identify the emotional triggers inside the game. As gamers get more engaged with the game, they unlock more and more exclusive game collectibles. Collectibles which they can purchase in a matter of seconds without ever leaving the game. And then a few days later, the gamer receives the product. Gamers love it. Some gamers loved it so much, they even created unboxing videos and posted them on YouTube. But there's one thing that the gamers don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't Black Box that made and sent them the products. Behind the scenes, the monetizer handled everything. First, the order inside the game, then our global manufacturing partners produced and shipped the products for us, eliminating our need to manage inventory. But as far as the gamer knows, their awesome product just shows up at their doorstep and looks like it's coming directly from Black Box. So let's talk about money. Our most commonly sold item is a high quality t-shirt. When we sell a $20 shirt, we first cover the manufacturing and shipping, and then we split the profit 50-50 between us and the gaming company. On average, we get $5, and the gaming company gets $5. Let's take 100,000 gamers playing a game like Black Box. In the advertising model, the game studio would earn $13 for every 1,000 views of an ad, or that's $1,300 in total. In our world, we have seen those same 100,000 gamers make a purchase 3.6% of the time. That's our conversion rate in Black Box. At $5 per purchase, that's a total of $18,000, or a 14 times increase in revenue for the game studio. Three months ago, before joining Techstars, we had an audience reach of 10,000 gamers. During the program, we focused on working with Apple Design Award winners like Black Box. You can think of them as Oscar winners for game development. And today, I am happy to announce that we have partnered with three Apple Design Award winners and increased our audience reach to over two million gamers. As you can see, the monetizer's platform delivers value to gamers and game studios today. But that's only step one. 
we are taking the platform beyond merchandising and building a blockchain-based game reward system. It connects gamers, game studios, and brands. For gamers, it provides choice regarding how they earn and spend their game rewards. For example, you will be able to take your game coins from one game and use them in another, or exchange them to physical products. For game studios, it offers a turnkey solution for driving revenue and increasing engagement. And for brands, it provides an opportunity to reach specific gamer demographics with highly targeted and integrated marketing campaigns. That's how we fix ads. We are bringing these three stakeholders together on one platform that works across all games. The Monetizers team has worked together for three years. We left our last job together as a team to start this company. We have built businesses before, and we have expertise in merchandising, app development, and cryptocurrencies. We have amazing advisors from gaming companies, Zynga, Activision, Blizzard, Electronic Arts. We are super excited to have these guys on board. Again, the monetizer is a turnkey solution that 14Xs game revenue and increases engagement. Today, we are taking a big step towards our vision of creating a blockchain-based game reward system on the Ethereum rails. On November 15th, we are launching an initial coin offering. To find out more about our ICO plan and how it is going to revolutionize the gaming industry, head to monetizer.io, subscribe, and download our white paper. And talk to us after the pitch. We're the guys in these blue Monetizer superhero shirts. <laughs> now, who wants to be a superhero? <laughs> Go. <laughs> Thank you. What does it mean to give first? Both personally and professionally, I developed a real strong admiration for small business owners. There are millions of them throughout this country. And to be able to work with companies, founders, startups that are after helping small businesses succeed is something that's near and dear to my heart. I chose to work with Jason and Rob and the Rapid RMS team because they actually come from the world of a small business. They understand those problems from a very real first-hand experience, and they've developed a real passion for solving those problems. I think that what sets the Rapid RMS team up for success in the long term is primarily the fact that they're not developing technology for technology's sake, that they are really after solving the needs of small businesses. I'm really, really excited to introduce to you Narav Patel from Rapid RMS. Greetings. Did you know there are 160 million visits at a convenience store every day? That is one out of two people in the US. That does not surprise me at all because I grew up in this industry. This is me when I was nine years old in a convenience store. Through hard work and determination, my dad achieved the American dream and it grew a single location into a portfolio of 10 convenience store and liquor stores. Since I was a kid, I have witnessed my dad working countless hours doing manual tasks to manage his business on a legal pad. And honestly, he is no different than thousands of independent convenience stores across the country who still operates this way. These retailers do not have IT departments to create enterprise solutions like big chains do. And most modern POS systems, like Shopkeep and Square, do not integrate with Tool Pump. That is why my team and I created Rapid RMS to streamline and modernize independent convenience store operations by replacing their clunky cash registers with iPads and taking and automating their inventory management fuel management, purchase order, reports and analytics to the cloud in real time. Hi, my name is Nirao Patel, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Rapid RMS. Thank you.
Today, I will talk about something I know very well, the independently owned convenience store space. I want to show you how massive this market is, and yet how underserved these retailers are when it comes to technology that they need to run their business. Today, independently owned C-store owners are unable to operate efficiently for three reasons. First, the complex fuel software and antiquated hardware makes it hard to train an employee, scan data, and do fuel price changes. Second, most retailers are still using legal pads to manage their inventory and to create purchase orders. And third, current system offers no analytics or insight in fuel management or inventory, forcing retailers to manage two separate systems. These are few of the many problems that sister owner faces today. First and foremost, Rapid makes business smarter by marrying fuel equipment to the modern point of sale to the cloud. Let me show you how it works. Our user-friendly app makes training employee simple and quick. Technically, a new hire can be trained in less than 15 minutes. Second, Rapid brings tools to retailers to manage inventory and fuel from anywhere on a single platform. It is easy to add new items and modify bulk items with our inventory app. Rapid will show you dead versus fast moving products and instantly create promotions. With our purchase order app, it allows retailers to generate list of items that needs to reorder and directly send to the vendors electronically. And last, Rapid includes real-time reporting and data analytics to understand the performance of the business with easy-to-use graphs and tables, all in one platform. Today, we bring business solutions to C-store owners to operate smarter, digitally, and efficiently. Rapid saves over 40 hours a week and over $1,000 a month by automating their manual tasks. In near future, we will bring predictive analytics to prevent items from running out of stock and directly order from Amazon as it gets low. Rapid will also bring retailers marketing tools to connect to their current customers and to reach to a new customers. Today, Rapid has installed in over 50 retail locations and have served 2.4 million consumers annually and has processed over $36 million in transactions. Thank you. But there is a plenty of room to grow. There are 154,000 convenience stores in the United States, of which 36,000 of of which 58% of the, of the market is independently owned convenience store like my dad. Rapid initially targeting 36,000 retail locations who are operating generic brand of fuel. Then we'll go after 54,000 locations who are selling branded fuel. And the timing couldn't be better for us. New cheap enabled credit card requirement for pay at the pump transactions forcing all the C-store owners to update their point of sale system by October 2020. This is a perfect opportunity for Rapid to get into the market. We go market in three ways. First, with combination of guerrilla and digital strategies directly targeting mom and pop store owners. Second, through distribution channel, including credit card agents and fuel wholesalers, who on average have 20 locations that they serve to. And third, we're fortunate that our customer loves our product so much that they refer to other retailers so, so frequently. This is our strongest sales channel, resulting in a whopping 63% referral rate. <laughs> that said, we make revenue in three ways. We sell our enterprise app for $129 a month. Second, we charge three, two cents on every credit card swipe occurs at our point of sale. And three, we make commission with Amazon when retailers purchase their out of stock items through our purchase order app. To give you a sense of, of the economics, if 2% of 36,000 selling generic fuel utilize our bundle of solution, we will be at 6 million annual run rate. Our team knows ins and outs of petroleum space. My co-founder, Jason Luna, 
brings expertise in entrepreneurship and business building. Supporting us is a team of engineers with unique sets of skills building and developing retail and petroleum technologies. Whether it's a gas station or electric charging stations, we believe when retailers operate efficiently, customers have better experience too. During my lifelong exposure to and understanding of this industry, Rapid RMS has created the only platform for independent owned C store operators to manage all aspects of their business. So, who would like to join me on my journey to make convenience stores smarter by innovating and modernizing their antiquated technology? I look forward to talk to you afterwards. Thank you. I chose the word Moog Quality mostly because I love the name. So the uh, Moog Quality name was what stood out in my mind, um, more quality. But in all seriousness, it's, it's a great uh, application for what we do. Uh, the ability for us to test across multiple devices is fantastic. Shavik has been great, uh, basically coming in when we need them to come in and being flexible in the product. If they keep going in that direction, expand those tools to make them even more flexible for our use and cover more devices, it will be a great product into the long term. I chose to work with the Mo Quality team because I've been in the testing industry for quite some time, and their, their insights into bringing AI into testing just excites the heck out of me. Uh, what I think will set up Mo Quality for success in the long term is two things. One is their passion, and two is the engine that they've built that as they continue to invest in will improve over time. It's my great honor to introduce Shavik Roy Chowdhury to the stage. Hi, I'm Shavik, and let me show you how we are using AI to revolutionize mobile app testing. Let's get started. Uh, oops. Actually, this is the point. Despite hours and hours of testing, our apps are still buggy. And that is because we do all of it manually. MoQuality is a self-learning software testing platform that automatically tests your apps, just like humans do, except only 80% faster and with 60% better coverage, allowing companies to launch their apps with confidence. My name is Shavik Rachaudhary. I am the MoQuality CEO with a PhD in software testing and having built large-scale software testing systems at companies like Google, Yahoo, and IBM, I know this space very intimately. My co-founder, Pushkar, the CTO, is an AI expert and has worked on self-driving cars at Toyota and Tesla. Our team has won several scientific and academic awards, including a seed grant from the National Science Foundation, and we are the guys who are bringing AI and computer vision to mobile app testing. So last month, Apple launched iOS 11 and three new phones. Accordingly, every app on the App Store needs to be upgraded to iOS 11 and tested for compatibility on all popular phones in the market, not just Apple, but also Android. And this turns out to be the biggest challenge, making sure that your app works on different screen sizes, OS versions, user configurations. Your app also you need to test every screen and every widget in your app. And those are a lot of combinations. And finally, when you have a new version of your app, you need to test core functionality yet again and again. Now, teams might find themselves wanting to run as many as 500,000 test cases per release, but they're not doing that. This is why errors are extremely common in apps, and testing is dreaded because it delays launch by weeks. Because these are too many tests for anyone to manually execute, and this overwhelms the limits of human testing, even if you use scripting. What QA has been calling automated for years is actually not automated after all. This is why you need AI, to help prioritize your testing efforts and do the testing for you, so that you can test important features quickly. Now let me show you how MoQuality works. Once an app is uploaded to MoQuality, our engine loads the app and checks each and every screen and interaction, just like a user would, and points out potential problems. What you're seeing on the screen is the Cox Connect mobile app, and that our engine was able to find an issue in the billing section of the app. 
Now, more quality identified and documented this error in literally minutes. Something that would have taken a human tester hours. And that is even they, if they could find it at all. Next, more quality repeats the tests on different devices. What you're seeing on the screen is the testing of the Park mobile app, which you might already know. Because you use it for parking at the tabernacle here tonight, right? This is the cross-device report for Park Mobile. And now Park Mobile does not need to rely on humans to repeat an arduous testing script, but has the confidence that more quality will get the work done quickly and accurately. And the best part, when Park Mobile has a new version of their app, more quality runs regression tests to make sure that old features still keep working. Now, did that sink in? With more quality, you'll be able to confidently release new versions without having to manually retest old features, giving you peace of mind and higher ratings on the App Store. Now, software testing is a $43 billion market, and we've chosen to focus on the fastest growing segment of this pie, mobile app testing, which is estimated at $4 billion. That said, our platform can be leveraged for testing games, hardware, IoT devices, and more. And we have aspirations to build solutions for each of these applications over time. As you saw in our demo, MoQuality is creating this new category of AI-based automatic testing tools that check every screen and interaction across devices and finds real issues that your users might run into. Unlike manual testing, you don't need to put in repetitive human effort. And unlike scripted testing, you don't need to write or maintain test scripts. And by the way, all the companies that you see on your right here, they are not our competitors. Our goal is to convert them into customers or partners. So with more quality, you can get a testing process that's 80% faster, reducing testing time from weeks to hours, and it gives 60% better coverage. So no more bad ratings on the App Store because of low quality. And all of this without any human effort, fast initial setup. Just think about the peace of mind, right? So anyone building an app can get started with more quality. Small and medium-sized enterprises can sign up for our self-service offering. And with our experience at IBM and Google, we understand the needs of large enterprises and have a full service solution for them. More quality is already being used today at several companies, our largest user being Park Mobile, who has seven and a half million end users, and all of them trust more quality to keep their quality under control. And we've already saved over 20 hours per week at these companies. We also have several enterprise companies in the pipeline, such as Cox Communications and ADP, who are starting a pilot with more quality. And today, I'm happy to announce that one of the largest smartphone manufacturers, Huawei, has signed a trial contract with more quality to help them test latest games on their new Android phones. Thank you. So in 2011, Mark Andreessen said that software is eating the world. And today I'm telling you that everywhere there's software, there should be more quality. It because when me and my girlfriend used to plan date night, it used to never really happen because there's so much work that goes into actually planning a date and we're both really busy people with, with travel, with work, with whatever else is going on in life. Love It really took a lot of the work out of that process and made sure we had an experience that was really unique, really personal, and honestly really unforgettable that we really look forward to every month. My favorite part about the Love It team is that they're really personal and they care about the experience. And you can see it from the events they pick for us, the fact that on my girlfriend's birthday they actually gave us a birthday card that they had all signed, and the fact that they send us text messages and interact with us before and after and during every date to make sure it's a great time. They really care and that stands out to me. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Ugo, CEO and co-founder of Blevit. You got it, man. If I were to ask you what comes to mind when you think of the online dating industry, my guess is you'd probably say something like Tinder, or maybe even eHarmony, Match.com, OkCupid. There's an app out there for all kinds of people. Men with beards, 
Bacon lovers, men with beards who love bacon. The singles market is filled with tons of apps that help people meet each other. But what happens after you meet someone? How do you keep that relationship fun, fresh, and exciting long after the honeymoon phase is over? Well, today I'd like to introduce you to a completely new market that's 10 times bigger than the singles market, five times more lucrative, and completely untapped. It's called the couples market, and we're one of the pioneers in this multi-billion dollar space. Hi, my name is Ugo Ezamuzie, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Blovit. Blovit is a date night concierge that helps busy couples put the spark back into their relationship. We do this by using your tastes and preferences to plan an entire date night for you without you having to do any of the work. We're already helping real couples in Atlanta plan awesome dinner dates, go on fun new adventures, and put the fire back into their romance. But our vision doesn't just stop with dinner. Our plan is to offer couples the most exciting date night experiences by combining dinner with fun activities, events, shows, and even travel all at the click of a button. If you were to ask most couples, they'll tell you that they would love to do more date nights. <laughs> but they never seem to make it happen as often as they would like. For example, have you ever had this conversation before? It's a Friday night, and your partner says to you, hey, so what should we do tonight? And of course, you respond with, um, I don't know. What do you want to do? Right? Now, show of hands, how many of you guys know that that was the wrong answer? <laughs> show of hands. It's a trick question, right? Because especially if your significant other is going back and forth with you, um, and they end up giving you the same response. Um, I don't know. What do you want to do? Right? And after going back and forth a few times, you realize you're still at home, still on the couch, and still watching Netflix. Now let me show you how, in three simple steps, Blovit makes planning a great dinner date night fast, easy, and absolutely delightful. First, Blovit collects the tastes and preferences of you and your significant other, and we use them to build a couple's profile for you. We then feed that profile into our recommendations algorithm, where it's matched against various restaurant attributes to deliver three personalized restaurant recommendations for you to choose from every month. Second, Blovit builds you your very own curated menu, where you can pick what you're gonna eat at the restaurant before you get there. Every menu item is especially selected for you and your significant other, taking into account your tastes, as well as any allergies and dietary restrictions. And third, pick when you're available, prepay, and you're all set. It works like magic, and it's that simple. On the night of your date, imagine walking into a restaurant you've never been to before. But this time, you're greeted by a host who welcomes you by name. When you get ushered to your seat, instead of your server handing you two menus, he or she hands you two of your favorite drinks. And just like that, your beloved experience has already begun. Your food arrives at a beautifully timed pace, and all you have to do is sit back, relax, and have a great time. Oh, and just like an Uber ride, after you're done, you can just get up and walk right out of the restaurant. No menu. No bill, no stress. Not only are we defining a completely new category, but we've created a completely new kind of dining experience. This VIP service allows us to make money in two ways. First, we charge couples a $9.99 monthly subscription fee to make date nights magical. And second, we charge the restaurants a 15 to 20% cut of the total restaurant bill 
which on average is about $30 per couple per date. In the next six to 12 months, we plan to streamline our operations, significantly reduce planning costs, and execute on a scaling strategy that will allow us to fully launch the city of Atlanta and start expanding into new cities. At only 2,000 paying couples in Atlanta alone, we'll be making as much as a million dollars in annual recurring revenue. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, because the couples market we're going after is huge, with over 50 million couples whose date night habits are both predictable and sticky. Just to put it in perspective, the singles market is a $5 billion market with a customer lifespan of only three to six months, while the couples market is a $50 billion market with a customer lifespan of three to 10 years. We launched this product about five months ago, and couples all over Atlanta have been raving about our service. That's why we've been able to grow our paid subscriber base by 100% every single month. Thank you. Our retention rate is at 97%, so not only are couples loving our service, but they're coming back month after month. And we've already worked with over 50 of the top restaurants here in the city. We're the team that's taking advantage of this massive untapped opportunity. My background is as a former investment banker and date doctor with years of experience in the couples industry. My co-founder Miguel is our CTO and his background is in mechanical engineering and computer science and he has already built the roadmap for automating Blovit's operations. In summary, Blovit is your personal date night concierge. We're solving a problem that millions of couples face every week. We're defining a brand new category. We're doing that with a highly profitable business model. We're growing at 100% month over month. We have a 97% retention rate and a great plan to automate and scale in a $50 billion market. Ladies and gentlemen, the future of date night is here, and all you have to do is blub it. Sign up today. <laughs> Thank you. Sign up today at blubit.com and use code TechStars to get your first two months free. Thank you. Apps that I use most frequently to communicate with my friends is definitely Facebook Messenger, um, Hangouts uh, from Gchat. That's a pretty easy transition since I can use that on my desktop. We also chat a lot on Snapchat. When I first used Vlipsy, I was really excited to see all of my favorite Pulp Fiction lines, like look at the big brands on Brad. I also loved seeing some of my favorite office space lines. I love to quote to people. Looks like somebody has a case of the Mondays and I love that Blipsy has that. Texting is boring, but with Blipsy I can send a video that actually has sound to make my friends laugh. It's my privilege to introduce you guys the CEO of Blipsy, Chris Nicholas. Classic quote, we all have our favorites and often we say them when speaking with our friends. It should be no different when we text. You see, when we text with media, like emojis and GIFs, we have this wonderful visual with no audio. So it's kind of like watching your TV on mute. I'll tell you what, let's see that same clip again, but this time with no audio in GIF format. That's a terrible idea. Oh, hey, Charles. I completely agree. But listen, 
There's never been a solution for sending gifts with sound until now. You can't handle the truth. A pickle ring. I am. Thank you. I'm Chris Nicholas, CEO and co-founder of Blipsy. Blipsy is the video clip search engine that translates what you're trying to say. Guess what? I love you. I love you. I love you. Into an expressive clip of a quote or scene from your favorite movies, television shows, or random internet video. And it's available today on iMessage and Android. Tell you what, let's see Blipsy in action. Okay, so here I am inside of a text message conversation with my co-founder, Matt, who has recently texted me to say he's running late to lunch. So inside of iMessage, I'll use the Blipsy keyboard to quickly search for a clip that can express my personality. And as I search through the results here, I've just remembered that one quote from my favorite episode of Seinfeld. Let me search directly for it. There it is. So now I'll go ahead and send this across, and what you'll see is that the video plays directly in line. And with a simple tap of the video, this transforms from an ordinary gift <laughs> into the most expressive media on the market that for the first time, Include sound. So that was our iMessage keyboard app. Now let's take a look at this same clip inside of our full app. Here we have additional sharing options to other social apps like WhatsApp, Messenger, Facebook, and Twitter. Or you can simply download the video to include it in your Snapchat or Instagram story. We call these short, expressive videos blips, and it's short for the term video clips. That's my co-founder, Matt. He and I have been building software together for the past decade. And prior to Blipsy, we were heading up content and advertising efforts for Kik, the largest messenger app for US teams with over 300 million registered users. And it was at Kick where our team invented the CPM advertising model around gifts. I know from experience, dude. You know what I mean? And here's what we found. This model literally prints ad revenue with effective CPMs measuring 25 times greater than the average YouTube ad. You see, this is the point. It's what we do and we're doing it again. Show me the money! Okay, Jerry, let's look at an example of how we plan to make money. Advertisers pay for top placement on specific keywords. In this example, Febreze has paid to sponsor the word odor. The user can select that clip from the top of the results and send it into the conversation. We get paid when this video is viewed. But sometimes you stink. This model is a win-win for both the consumer and the advertiser. For the consumer, they get expressive content that can help them communicate. And for the advertiser, they get to insert their brand's message at exactly the right moment in the conversation. That's not terrible. Hey, there we go. And also this month, we're launching an integration directly into Viber and Skype, instantly reaching more than half a billion users with those relationships. And that's not all. We're also working towards direct integration with other amazing apps like Slack, Layer, Kick, and Islands for additional exposure. This is really cool. This is really cool, Arnold. And did you know the average consumer spends five hours a day on their mobile devices? and over half that time is spent on messaging and media applications. And it's on these applications where six billion emojis and over one billion GIFs are sent every day. 
You see, consumers love this media, which explains why Giphy, the largest gift provider, has a current valuation of $600 million. And this is just the beginning, because there will be an estimated $27 billion spent on digital video ads in 2017 alone, a number that is expected to surpass TV ad spend by the year 2020. I think our president has something to say billions about that. Billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions. That's right, this is a massive opportunity and our timing is perfect. You see, the adoption for expressive media is enormous and flips represent the next generation of this media. And ad spend on digital video is skyrocketing and we can prove a better ROI for advertisers. And finally, expressive content exists already as a core user experience feature on every social platform out there. Wow! Wow! The way we communicate daily relies on unexpressive text and media that we can't hear. It's time we take it to the next level. Boom! Shaka laka laka! Right, I'm Chris Nicholas, CEO and co-founder of Vlipsy. Vlipsy is making video clips conversational to help us express our emotions, our thoughts, and our reactions. If you haven't already, download the app today and experience the next generation of communication. This is a game changer. And remember, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Thank you. I know we're running a little late and some of you have to run across the street. Just give us a couple of more minutes, please. But wasn't that fantastic? Let's hear it for the companies. Before we invite the founders to the stage tonight, I just wanted to share a couple of thoughts and acknowledge a few more people. So please just give us a couple of more minutes. So I've been asked several times, how does this year's class compare to last? The first thing I think is actually quite obvious. I wish we had more gender diversity in our founders. I like to think that we tried hard, and I know that we did, but in the end, the fact is you didn't see a single female CEO on the stage tonight. And my commitment to this community is that we're gonna double our efforts towards creating greater gender diversity among our mentors and in our class. The second thing is a bit less obvious, and I suppose you wouldn't know it without really spending time with our founders. But this collection of companies is by far one of the most collaborative assemblies of talent that I've ever had the privilege to work with. The degree to which they help one another is truly astounding. They formed a very strong bond with one another and share in each other's wins in a very special way. And I'm really excited to see how these relationships will affect one another over time and expand our worldwide network. And now on to some thanks. Every successful entrepreneur I know has a strong support network. Thank you to the friends and family that are here tonight um, who are supporting our founders who dare to chase their dreams. Without your support, it would not be possible. And on that note, I'd like to thank some special people in my life who, similar to our founders, haven't seen a whole lot of me the last 90 days. Thank you to Marlene and Evan and Lauren for your support, I love you. And a very special shout out tonight to my dad, who I'm so happy could be here with us. Dad, you are the original entrepreneur in my life and have always been my inspiration. Thank you. And finally, last but certainly not least, you've heard of a lot, uh, you've heard of people being called the glue that keeps something together. Rachel Ford is our glue. And Techstars Atlanta would not be the same without her. Rachel, can you please join?
Thank you so much, Rachel, for everything you do. We would not want to do this without you. Good evening, everybody. Today, I have the distinct pleasure of recognizing some of the hardest working people here at Techstars Atlanta, our 2017 Techstars Atlanta Associates. Techstars Associates work with us for the duration of the three-month accelerator program, where they bring a variety of skill sets to the table, such as design, business development, marketing, and engineering for our 10 companies to leverage. There's no doubt that you've seen a lot of statistics referenced on these slides today. Most of these analyses have come from Shreya's hard work crunching the data for our companies. And what about those impressive revenue statistics? David has spent countless hours refining sales processes with our founders to help them land some of their very first customers and contracts. Thank you. And everything that you've seen or touched today at Demo Day, like printed programs, VIP badges, and the 10 amazing slide decks behind me, have been designed by Rachel, Liz, and Brett. Thank you. Their work helps these companies portray who they are through both design and brand identity, something that we all know is of extremely high value to consumers. But to describe their experience with us at Techstars Atlanta and their plans for post-program, I think it's best to hear it out of their own words. So we're gonna roll the video. So it's been great being a part of Techstars. Um, it's a very warm and welcoming family, and it's a great opportunity to work with 10 of the best startups uh, in Atlanta, helping them kind of achieve their goals. No offense to my previous employers, right from day one, we had the flexibility to work on different projects with different teams. The highlight was definitely rebuilding Techstars Atlanta's website while using Landing Lion. Just wish the program wasn't already over because I've really enjoyed working with the teams. I've learned so much about the different companies and I've also learned a lot about myself and my ability to design. During my time here, I was able to design investor pitch decks, do branding illustrations, and help launch an internship program and website for Blipsy. One of the things I'm looking to do after Techstars is to get hired by an innovative tech company. I love Atlanta, however, I'm open to relocating to New York or San Francisco. I'm entirely self-taught, so I would love the opportunity to work with smart, creative people where I can continue to learn and improve my skills. After Techstars, I'll be looking for freelance projects and a full-time design role at a creative agency. I love working on ads and ad campaigns and truly enjoy the whole process from brainstorming to creating to launching and everything in between. So, I'm very proud to announce that I'll be joining 2U Laundry as the new city director for Atlanta, helping cleaning up this city one bag of laundry at a time. All right, well, we hope you all enjoyed the show tonight. <laughs> awesome. Are we taking more pictures? Oh, my mic is live. Oh, the mic is live. <laughs> right? Must be some music. Music.